Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Wednesday, October 30th, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. Uh, I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, today we have two things going on here at the church. One, this morning at 9.30 a.m. is our Ladies Deeper Life group. A great group of ladies meeting down in the multipurpose room, uh, having a great time together, uh, studying the scriptures, praying for one another, and a whole lot of laughing happens down there too, which is kind of cool. Um, and also in the evening at 7 o'clock is our deep dive Bible study into the Gospel of Mark. Uh, that's happening this evening. Also down in the multi-purpose room. Uh, the ladies are on the couches of the multi-purpose room. The deep dive Bible studies are around the tables. We also have a lot of fun. We also have a lot of laughter um, and deep uh, digging into the, the Gospel of Mark. It's also available for you on Zoom. You can get the Zoom link from the church office or uh, you can catch it after the fact uh, on our YouTube channel. We, it'll be on YouTube and also we share it on Facebook as well. So lots of different ways to get into that Bible study. Uh, this past Sunday I preached on the topic of abortion politics and talked about the question was uh, raised in our Stump the Chump sermon series about whether Christians, evangelical Christians, have overemphasized abortion or underemphasized abor or were we underemphasizing abortion uh, in years past. And um, I uh, it's a challenging question because it's a question about um, political choices um, on an issue that's not mentioned in the Bible and political choices specifically are not mentioned in the Bible because the Bible is written to people who didn't really have any political choices, basically. Um, so uh, it's, it's an interesting question. We have to sort of dig deep into scripture for the principles that will help us to understand an answer to that question. Ultimately, my answer to the question was, I don't know, I'm not a political strategist, um, but there are some biblical principles uh, for helping us make strategic decisions politically. Um, and one of the key passages I talked about was 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's a passage that talks about spiritual gifts, and it talks about how the body of Christ is one body made up of many parts united by union with Christ. And um, so I think it's a key passage for us in making political decisions because ultimately different Christians are going to make different political decisions. Sometimes different strategic decisions and sometimes we have even different views on what our strategic aims ought to be. And in 1 Corinthians 12, the Apostle Paul uses this image of the body of Christ as being like a body with many parts. And all the parts are essential. And I made the argument on Sunday that this, I think, is applicable not just in the realm of spiritual gifts, but in the realm of other areas of Christian diversity as well. Different, different ethnicities, different uh, male and female genders, um, and um, and also different political opinions as well. Different parts doing different things. Sometimes, I mean, God calls some of us to be very involved in one particular issue. Let's say it's feeding the poor, right? Maybe maybe what we're, what we're called by God to do is to feed the hungry, okay? Uh, those who can't afford to feed themselves. And, you know, there's many folks in, our, in the Christian community here in Poughkeepsie, New York, whom God has called uh, to feed the hungry. And I'm grateful to be able to support people who have that calling. My particular calling is preaching and teaching the scriptures. Um, but I also contribute and donate to those who are feeding the poor and the hungry because I believe it's an important and valuable ministry that I don't, that because I'm called to preach and teach the scriptures, I don't have time to do both. Um, some also are called to provide assistance to women who are involved in a crisis pregnancy, who have a pregnancy they weren't expecting or perhaps don't know if they can afford to have their child. And so we have the 
uh, Integra Pregnancy Services in our community that works to uh, assist women in uh, giving birth to their children and helping women to make a decision uh, about um, carrying their children to term. Integra also works to help women who've had an abortion to work through some of the grief and the guilt that comes uh, in the wake of that decision. So uh, great ministry, right? I mean, it's important stuff. I'm really glad that Integra Pregnancy Services is there doing such a great job with, with women and children and husbands and, 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 and men who are fathers. Um, really great, great ministry. Um, our church supports Integra Pregnancy Services. We also host Integra events and we participate in the Walk for Life, all sorts of things. Um, that's not my primary calling, but I again, I support it with my own finances. I, I think I'm, I'm delighted that that work is happening. Um, one body, many parts, and the different parts are doing different things. Just like your hand might do one thing and your spleen might do another, right? Um, different parts that are each doing the, the thing that God's called them to do. When Paul talks about that, he says that there are two errors that the church often falls into with regard to this diversity. Um, the first error is this. He says in verses 14 through 16, For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. The first error of the that the body can commit is of a, is of one part saying well if i'm not this doing the same thing as some other part i'm not legit a part of the body right my hand says well i don't wear a sock and i don't wear a shoe and uh, you don't walk on me so i'm not a legit part of the body no 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 <laughs> i need my feet but i also need my hands so uh the first error is for a part of the body to feel like they're not part of the body because they're not doing this, that, or other thing that some other part of the body is doing. Uh, denigrating oneself and denigrating one's own contribution to the body is the first error that Paul talks about here. And I don't know what God's called you to do, but I'm guessing it probably doesn't involve recording daily devotional videos, right? Um... I believe this is part of the ministry that God's given me. Uh, I record daily devotional videos to try to bless as many people out there as I possibly can. People who are part of New Beginnings, people who are not part of New Beginnings. And we have a number of people who come into church on a Sunday morning for the first time, and they tell me, oh, Pastor House, I know you. You don't know me, but I know you. I've been watching your daily devotional videos. Well, praise God. Thank you. And I'm glad that God uses what God's called me to do in service of his kingdom. But probably God hasn't called you to do that. Probably God hasn't called you to um, get up on Sunday morning and preach. Probably God hasn't called you to lead the elder board in preparing a church budget, right? I mean, there's a bunch of things that God's called me to do that he may not have called you to do. That doesn't make you any less a part of the body. If God's called you to teach Sunday school, if God's called you to... Uh, volunteer at our VBS, if God's called you to uh, to do great accounting work out there in the world, to serve your neighbor in that way, if God's called you to uh, you know love your neighbor by mowing their lawn, I mean, there's lots of different ways that you can love your neighbor and serve God uh, out in our in our community in our world, and you should not feel as though because you don't record daily devotional videos, that somehow Pastor House is more a part of the body than you are. It's not the way it works. Each part of the body does its own thing. And none of us should think we're less a part of the body because our thing is not somebody else's thing. That's the first error. And the second error that Paul talks about here is, is from the other, other side. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. So this error the Apostle Paul is saying is, is of not of one uh, part of the body denigrating themselves, but another part of the body uh, denigrating some other part of the body, right? It's, it's of us denigrating someone else. 
Here I am, Pastor House, I'm recording my devotional video. Here I am, Pastor House, I'm preaching on Sunday morning. Here I am, Pastor House, I'm helping to write the church budget. And I somehow think that the person who is handing out bulletins on a Sunday morning is less important to the body of Christ than I am. Um, or the person who's running the sound booth, or the person who is uh, sitting in the nursery and playing with the, the babies. Um, somehow that's less important. Somehow the person who is cleaning the church on a Saturday morning, or uh, sometimes on Friday afternoons and evenings, um, that they're somehow less important to the body of Christ. Or the person whose service to the body of Christ is outside the walls of this church, who is working at CareNet, or working at I'm sorry, Integra Pregnancy Services, or working at uh, Love in the Name of Christ, or is working at a secular job and serving their neighbor in that way. If I were to say, as Pastor House, okay, well, I'm the important member of the body, and you're not, that's the second error, right? Not me denigrating myself, but me denigrating you. That's, that's the error. Instead, the body is supposed to support one another and to encourage one another and to say, yeah, good job doing what God has called you to do. And again, I think this applies outside of sort of spiritual gifts arena as well. If God has called you to have a passion for a particular uh, issue in this world, maybe it's um, maybe it's support of, of Israel and and maybe that's what God's called you to, to really focus in on. Maybe God's called you to focus in on adoption and uh, helping people to adopt children who are unable to be cared for by their parents. Maybe God's called you to be a foster parent. Maybe God's called for you to make meals for foster parents. Maybe God, who knows what, God has called each of us to different uh, roles in the body of Christ, to do different tasks to have different things that we do. And so uh, each one of those is essential. And if and, and it's what's really common, and my mom said this to me years and years and years ago when I, when I got really arrogant about my understanding of, of what every Christian ought to be concerned about. She said to me, honey, just because that's what God's called you to do doesn't mean it's what God's called everybody to do. And that really stuck with me. I was like 17, and that really stuck with me at that time. And, and I still think about it from time to time, that, uh, that God has called each one of us to do what he's called us to do. And so for us, it feels like that job is the most important job, and every Christian really should, should recognize that it's the most important job. But, you know, God's called somebody else to a different job, and they feel that their job's pretty important too. And and rightly so. Um, when we think about political strategy throughout the centuries, in our era, in around the 1970s, God raised it up in the hearts of men and women in the evangelical church to uh, move the needle on abortion in our country. Roe versus Wade had just been decided, and um, abort the abortion rate was skyrocketing the number of abortions was skyrocketing and so god called uh, his people many of his people to sort of mobilize against abortion and uh made a tremendous difference their abortion rate the abor number of abortions in this country and the abortion rate are both way lower than they were immediately following roe versus wade it's been just going down going down going down until recent years in which it's gone up a, a bit in the last two pregnancies but um the god has used his people to do a mighty thing a thing that didn't maybe need to be done earlier but a thing that needed to be done now and so we don't judge people from previous eras whom God called to do different things, just like we don't judge people in our era who have a different role in the body of Christ. God has called each of us to do what we're called to do at the time we're called to do it, and we just need to be faithful and not uh, judge those who are doing other things that God's called them to do. One body, many parts, united through Jesus Christ. It's a powerful and important lesson about what the church is supposed to look like. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love for us. I pray that you bless each person within the sound of my voice with a recognition of what 
their role is in the body of Christ. Help them to see what you've called them to do and to do it with faithfulness. I lift up our uh, Ladies Bible Jubilee Life group this morning. Pray that you bless them, encourage them, and strengthen them in your word. May they have a wonderful time of study and laughter and prayer. In Jesus' name. I pray also for our deep dive Bible study in the Gospel of Mark tonight. Please bless us as we gather to study the scriptures and to we start Jesus enters into Jerusalem uh, in this passage starting tonight. So I, I pray that you bless that uh, study as we talk about start to talk about the crucifixion of Jesus, which is so so powerful. Um, I pray your blessing on every person within the study, uh, either in person, on Zoom, or on YouTube after the fact. I pray that you bless all folks who are involved through your word. Lord, and I pray that you'd help us all to find what you're calling us to do and to do that with all our might. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings. I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.